Hi folks, it's good to be with you. Nice to see you. To see you nice, as Brucey would say. I'm on my way to uh, church. Just make sure that's okay. I'm on my way uh, to church. And I just thought I'd offer my thoughts today. It's not been a productive week this week, to be honest. Um, it's been a few good things. Uh, I've had a few interviews uh, with uh, UCB. It was published. And uh, the fellow brother pastor in America interviewed me, that was good. Uh, but I've been struggling all week to be honest. Uh, with a Saturday just getting me down really. Uh, was I've, I've talked about it a lot but it was an ongoing problem for a few years and it's just come to a head and it really got me down. Um, just got on top of me to be honest uh, it, I don't think people realize how stressful it is preaching to crowds and then you haven't got a, a team that are, are backing you uh, but you've got to deal with uh, lots of people with their own agendas it, it's it's difficult when you're trying to trying to do other stuff you know Trying to preach and trying to talk to people, so so it's got it got me down this week, and I'm quite a sensitive guy, I'm quite tough really. Yeah, you know I can stand in front of a crowd of about a hundred, but um, when it comes to people's criticisms of people, I can be quite sensitive. So it's not been a good week to be honest. Like I said, highlights are the two interviews. One with UCB, one with a uh, pastor in America. Um, what else? Uh, I'll get onto a book that I've been reading in a minute. Um, I went to the Tommy Robinson book signing um, for his new book that's come out. Muhammad's Quran and um, I know a lot of Christians a lot of people say well why do you uh, you know you shouldn't be associated with that kind of stuff and um, but I agree with the things that they say about about the dangers of Islam you know and I do think the same things that need to be said and to be honest I don't I don't like this criticism of Tommy Robinson. I think that the guy is a decent guy. I don't. I don't think he's as bad as everybody else makes him out to be. To be honest, but I, I do realise that my job is a Christian. It is a pastor, preacher, evangelist, Christian apologist, and my job is to reach everybody and to reach Muslims. And I know that many Muslims would not be happy they think I'm involved in that kind of thing so I understand that but I'm not involved in in that group in that movement in any way and there are some things that I don't agree with um, I do think it like that there's a lack of spirituality there there needs to be a, a grounding in, in Christianity in the Word of God and and there are some elements that attach, attach to the movements that are, are, are not as sincere, I think, as Tommy Robinson. And I think at the end of the day, the movement's not going to go anywhere unless it's rooted in Christianity, really. Um, but I do think that the movement is sparking debate in the country. I do think the movement will grow in strength. 
and I do think that um, there's a debate that's going to rage in the next year or two about the nature of Islam and its role in our country and you know I think it's legitimate and that's why I posted one or two videos about the book sign. I think it's legitimate to make people aware of the need to discuss about the nature of Islam which I think is theocracy and a theocracy means your freedom of speech is going you know so so that's why I've posted one or two videos that's why I have an interest in it but it doesn't but anybody who says I'm a Tommy Robinson supporter or I'm involved in that kind of thing that's just not true I'm a street preacher I'm an evangelist I'm an apologist and that's where my aims are and I'm for the building the spiritual kingdom but I'm also for free speech and I don't like people trying to stop free speech I don't like it and uh, I think uh, people tried to stop Tommy Robinson from having his free speech and I just don't agree with that you know so that's where I'm at there with the Tommy Robinson thing I'm not uh, I'm not in the movement <laughs> but I have sympathies with some of the aims in terms of making people aware of the dangers of of Islam. I mean, the politically correct way to say it is militant Islam. I don't think there's such thing as a militant Islam. I think Islam in the Quran teaches jihad. And like I said, I'm willing to debate any Muslim apologist, any Muslim scholar, anywhere. And I can show you that from an academic scholarly opinion. And so, I just want people to be aware that our freedoms of speech will go in the next few years if, if Islam comes to power. But the way to deal with it is coming back to the book that I read recently this week about the kingdom. The way to deal with polit political issues ultimately is to get back to the kingdom. Is to come back to an understanding of the church and what the role of the church is today. That the church has to be all that she needs to be at this time. And that's the answer to this issue, is for the church to get back to walking in love of obedience to the Bible, the church obeying the word of God, the church preaching the word of God, the church missioning the word of God, getting the word of God out. That's the answer to the rise of Islam. Um, so that's what I think is the main answer. But I do think it's legitimate to make the political argument and to make people aware of the dangers politically. Um, I do think that that is legitimate, you know? So yeah, so you've got to think about the kingdom really. The way to deal with it though is the kingdom. That's the main way, and that's where my focuses are, is to, to preach the word of God and, and to disciple people and, and to encourage people in the things of God, really. And any Muslim out there who thinks, oh, I'm put off by Jason, you know, I'm just a preacher of the word, me. I'm, that's all I am. I'm not a politician. And I don't hate Muslims. I love Muslims. I absolutely love Muslims. If I were a Christian, I would not be an atheist, I would become a Muslim because I'm so impressed by so many Muslims. I'm, I, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely impressed. I'm impressed by the Muslim women. I just think the Muslim women really impress me. They're really... I, 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 I just admire the Muslim women and many Muslim men that I meet, I admire them. and. I would join Islam if I wasn't a Christian. I would join Islam because of the people, because I admire the Muslim people and I love the Muslims. I just absolutely love them. I really do. And um, many Muslims have been good to me. Many Muslims are good to my family. Many Muslims are good to uh, 
speak to me when I'm street preaching, that, that many of them are kind to me. You get the odd teenagers like like you've seen in Oldham who, who try to bully you or some idiots who try to bully you, but they're not representative of Muslim people in general because most Muslims, like for example, you know, the Muslim guy that I meet in Rochdale who sells his burgers is really nice to me. The, a Muslim guy and his little son uh, bought me a drink when I was in Rochdale. So there's some lovely Muslim people. So I'm not, I'm not against, I'm not against Muslims because I, I believe many Muslims are nice and I love Muslim people. I, I absolutely love them. And that's why I do evangelism to Muslims. That's why I debate Muslim apologies because I really love Muslim people. But I fear, like, if you read the Quran, you can't get away from jihad, it's there all over the place. You know, and that's not being hateful or spew spewing out hate, it's just a textual reality. And no matter how you try to soften it up as Muslims, it's there in the text. It's just there, you know. So that's my view, so that's where I'm at. Um, I've been thinking recently the significance of the local church. There's a need for the local church to for us to value the local church, you know. We don't value the local church, we don't value the church as we should. And I've been thinking a lot about that recently. I had an opportunity this Saturday to go to to London to Speaker's Corner, but I was asked to preach and uh, at my local church and uh, I really wanted to go down to London. But I thought, no, my church, my local church is important, you know. And I think we have to um, value our, our churches and local churches, you know. And, uh, and I think as independent evangelicals, we, we can have a disrespect for the church. And I think that's wrong because the Bible clearly teaches the church is, you know, is central in the kingdom of God, in the work of God. I've been struggling a bit, to be honest, this week. I've been studying Ephesians chapter 1, and um, it says we have all spiritual blessings in Christ. It talks about we have blessings uh, in redemption. And um, I'm struggling there because it says we have all blessings, but I'm not married, and uh, I find it so hard not being married, you know. And yet, the Bible tells us we have all spiritual blessings, and it's not a material blessing, it's spiritual blessings, but, yeah, we've got all these spiritual blessings, but I'm in pain, I'm struggling being single. And I've been wrestling with that, and I've been finding it really, really difficult to deal with. To, to marry the two, We're all, we've got all spiritual blessings, but yet I'm in pain. And it's been very difficult, you know. It's been very difficult. The other difficult thing is having a best friend who I, who I think so much about, who believes in annihilationism. And uh, that, that, that has really been difficult because, and, and also difficult to wrestle with the doctrine of hell, really. I, I believe in the doctrine of hell myself, the traditional doctrine, um, but it's very hard when you've got a, a, a best friend and a colleague who tells you that they don't believe in the doctrine of hell, they believe in annihilationism, and it's kind of knocked me for six really, because I, it's just really 
really hard to take when you've got someone who you, you cared about so much and who you've done so much with. It just takes a different line on a fundamental issue. It, it, it's very difficult. Uh, it's difficult because you've got to put, you've got to stand up for what you believe is right. You want to show love, but you want to stand up for the truth. And then the per some of the questions the person asks, like the main question is the moral, the morality of it, you know, the morality of sending people to hell. Uh, it's very difficult to, to deal with. And, um, you know, I can understand where my friend's coming from. I mean, it's hard to take that, that God would send people to hell. So I, I hold to the traditional view, but it's been difficult this week struggling with that and wrestling with that, to be honest. So yeah, so it, it's just been difficult really. Um, it's also been difficult with uh, a few friends, a friend of mine, Frank, who's a street preacher. Um, I'm getting a bit upset about it now, just thinking about it, but he... Uh, there he is, he served the Lord for many years, giving out leaflets and tracts, and uh, I was, I, there was a time when I was street preaching and I was so alone, and there was a guy called, uh, a brother who, who uh, a brother of mine who, who knows this brother, who's passed away, he used to come out, stand with me and help me, and then there was... Um, There was this guy, this guy called Frank, and he come help me. And now he's in a home, and he's just lied on the bed, and he, there's nothing he can do. He, he can't even move, and nobody goes to see him. Nobody's visited him hardly, apart from me and another brother. You know, and it's so depressing. It's so sad. And I've been to see him once a week, but I, I, I just haven't got the energy to keep going. Because you've got to drive all the way down there, you know. But he needs people to go and see. He needs visits every two or two days, you know. He needs to be people to sit with him for hours, and and it's and it's laying on my conscience. And then I've not been feeling too good myself. I've got my mum and my dad, and I, they need my support. Um, and it's like things on top of you, too much on top of you, you know, you've got other things as well, other people that are not well, like one of our neighbours is not well, and you're worried about the neighbour, um, you're worried about other people that are not well, friends that you've got who are not well, and you try and go and see them if they're in hospital, like last week I went to see a lady who was in hospital, she doesn't go to my church, she goes to another church, and, and you just feel a bit overwhelmed, like, and you've got friends who, 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 who got people who are not well, and you're worried about them, and and you're praying, and it, and it, and, it, and you just feel a bit overwhelmed with it, you know. Um, I think uh, I'm always grateful to um, I am always grateful to the reform faith because in the midst of all this in the midst of struggling myself this week um, I've always got these riches you know I've always got 
my Bible, um, a sound teaching in Christ. I've always got good stuff to go back to. I've always got good stuff to, you know, this this has been a difficult week for me. You know, not, not the worst week or anything like that, but it's just been a struggle. And uh, I'll get through it next week. I'll be back to normal next week. And I'm just being honest with you. I don't want to pretend, you know, if I'm not the best at the best, I, I've got to be honest. I'm not going to pretend. But I'm really grateful because I know that I'll get through it because I, I've got so much to be thankful for. There's so many good books and good uh, preachers that I know that I'll just listen to them and, and, and get fed and get strengthened in the Word of God. You know, I was listening to, uh, on Ephesians, you know, uh, and I'm going to read that, I'm going to end with this before I go into church, you know. But, um, I was listening to Alistair Begg. If you've not listened to Alistair Begg, he's a beautiful, lovely preacher. I just love the guy. So gentle, so loving, so kind. And um, I really, really admire him. So there's people like Alistair Begg, all preachers like Lloyd-Jones, um, Sinclair Ferguson, Derek Thomas, uh, just really good preachers that you listen to them and, and, and they just build you up, they just encourage you, you know. So I'm just so grateful that God has given me that heritage. And then the books, I mean, I have been reading last week, especially, but most, um, most days I read the Westminster Confession. Um, or I listen to a, a good reformed preacher like Alistair Begg. And I'm just built up. I'm just encouraged. I'm just strengthened. You know, so yeah. So I'm going to church today, but I'm I'm not at my best to be honest. I'm preaching in the afternoon uh, at my home church. This is not my home church, but I've got the morning spare, so I'm going to go in. But uh, my home church, I'm preaching there. But I'm feeling weak, and uh, I just need God's strength and God's help, really, to be honest. Can't always be on the up. Can't always be on the highs, you know. I was looking at my preaching, street preaching the other day and I thought to myself, boy, how did you do that? How did you keep going like that? Firing it up like that? I thought, Phew. I just seem to have so much passion and energy, you know. But I just don't have the passion this week. I just don't have the energy this week. But you know, one of the things that was the most relaxing this week that really chilled me out um, last night, um, I got a video from a charity shop, it was only like 50p and it was called the, it was just like an old video called the uh, French Lieutenant's Daughter uh, no, the French Lieutenant's Woman and it was a film done in the 1980s and uh, it was a period kind of drama like looking at this lady who was struggling in her, in her womanhood and this scientist who was supposed to get married met her and I watched the video and, and it just really could calm me down, can't really relax me, you know. Sometimes we need to just not be super spiritual things sometimes. We just need to just be ordinary people and chill out. And so I watched this film and then I finished that and I was really calmed and really at peace, you know. And then um I watched uh, Dad's Army. <laughs> Dad's Army. Oh man, they're so funny. They are so funny. That Dad's Army is the best. 
It is the best. It, it was hilarious. And it just chilled me out, you know. It just made me stop thinking and stop worrying. But it really chilled me out. And sometimes it's not being super spiritual. Sometimes we just have to take care of ourselves and just be normal people and do normal things, you know. <laughs> like watch a film or watch have a, have a laugh or something, you know, just to chill out. Um, but Dad's arm is so funny. So, so funny. It was... Uh, it was... Some general was coming to choose who was going to be in, in the... Um, in the... Um, in, in another company and they were going to get rid of some of the Dad's Army guys and put them into uh, another group and they didn't want to do it. And it was on the basis if anyone was too old, they'd be pushed into another group. So, so um, all the old guys made themselves young by putting dye on the hair. And uh, the captain, Captain Mannering, I think it is, he put a, a wig on his head and it, it was so funny. And uh, it just really helped me to chill out, you know. So those are my thoughts, just a few thoughts really, and I'm, I'm, and I'm just sharing my heart, being genuine, being straight with you. You know, if it's a good week next week, I'll be telling you that. If it's a difficult week, I'll be telling you that. I'm not going to hide and pretend I'm super spiritual sometimes when I'm not, you know. I'm just not going to do that. I, w I want you to see the reality of, of things, you know. So I'm just going to read Ephesians chapter 1 just to end it on a spiritual note Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy without blame before him in love having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the prayers of the glory of his grace wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time he might gather together in one all the things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the prayers of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed you were sealed with that, that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the prayers of his glory. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. What is the exceeding greatness of his power towards who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things, the church, which is the body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Amen. I need your prayers, guys. I need your prayers. We're going to pray and go to church. God bless you. Love you all. Pray for you all. I do. I do pray for everybody. You know, I do. I do pray for everybody. And um, I just say a few things that that seem to be happening, which 
It's amazing, really. But everywhere I go, I, and I don't say I'm not saying this to boast, but everywhere I seem to go, people seem to recognise me. Um, but strange things are happening to me. When I was in Manchester last week, a lady, a young woman, came up to me. She's only about 25, blonde-haired lady. And there was a lady filming her, but this lady came up to me and gave me a kiss on the cheek here. And um, lots of people come up to me, shake my hand. Lots of people come up to me, give me a hug. Lots of people come up to me and thank me for what I'm doing. And I think what it is, is people are filming me in Manchester and then they're putting it on their Facebook and or putting these videos wherever and they're going viral and lots of people have got to know me, you know. And so everybody, everywhere I go, everybody, there's always somebody kind of recognising me, you know. And and it's all positive. Everybody's positive. It's very rarely anybody's negative, you know. So I just pray that God would use that, that I can use that to to get people to think about Jesus, you know. That I can use that notoriety so that people can come to know the Lord. So that that's a good thing in a way, that I can use that to encourage people. So I'm going to pray and then um, go to church. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your love and your mercy, but I don't feel the strongest today, Lord. I don't feel super spiritual today. I feel very weak, very frail, tired and a little discouraged deep down, Lord. And there's a good things happening, Lord. There are things that are good, but yet I don't feel encouraged, Lord. I just come to you today, Lord, and I just bring everybody who's been listening to this video. And it says in your word, come to me, all you are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And Lord, we come to you today, and we just say that we don't have any strength in our own. We just don't have anything in ourselves. Lord, we need you. We need your strength and we need your help. So Lord, I pray, fill us with your joy, fill us with your peace, fill us with your love, fill us with you today. Each one of us, Lord, fill us that we may have the mind of Christ, that we may live for you, Lord. Help us, O oh Lord. Reveal yourself to us, Lord. Draw yourself to us, Lord. May you be our reality. So, Lord, we thank you for this day. We ask that you bless us in Jesus' name. Bless each family and each person represented in this video. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. I'm going to go to church. So, God bless.